yeah, that, that process I just described is called a mesh refinement study. Um, so um, there's actually a little bit more to it. So let me, let me just talk about that now. So, um, so our job was to verify that the solution doesn't depend on the mesh size. Well, the solution will always depend on the mesh size a little bit. And how much it depends on it can actually tell us something about our uncertainty. So um, the, there's a process that is really important to do for every simulation called a mesh refinement study. Um, and the full details of this, of like how to do this correctly, are, in, are laid out in a couple of ASME standards. So I'll just make sure that you know this. There is an ASME standard called V and V20. It stands for Verification and Validation. Um, I don't know what the, I guess 20 refers to the fact that it's the 20th variant of this. But anyway, so VNV20 is, is a standard that was created to govern um, verification and validation of computational fluid dynamics. There's another one that's almost exactly the same called verification and validation 10, VNV10, um, that governs solid mechanics. So there are some fairly specific details about like how you actually estimate error and un uncertainty depending on what type of simulation that you're doing um, but I'll give you the simple version here um, so basically step one is if you're using an iterative solver um, make sure that you check to make sure that your iteration error is very very low typically if you take enough iterations though um, typically the iteration error will be less than than the discretization error which is like the portion that comes from the mesh Okay, step two is to use, so once you've done that, once you've used enough iterations to make sure that that statement is true, um, use what's called a mesh refinement study. So basically what this means is that you make, you never solve the problem just one time. You always make sure that, like, if you're going to simulate something, you, you simulate it with at least three different meshes um, of different uh, densities. So like the idea is that like maybe I make one mesh the, where the elements let's say have size one and then I make one where the typical element size is half of that and then I make another mesh where the size is half of that. Um, so um, that means by the way that if it's a three-dimensional simulation so if each dimension goes down by a quarter that means there are four times as many elements per dimension but it's three-dimensional simulation so four times four times four is I believe 64. Um, so you know you have 64 times as many elements on the most dense mesh that, that you work on typically um, which can be challenging but here's the but the basic idea is that you run simu a bunch of simulations with different mesh sizes then you look at some variable that you care about so again like uh, in a heat transfer simulation you might care about let's say the total heat passing through some surface so the the graph that I have here was one that I stole from the VNV standards. So this is an example, is if I have some, I'm doing a simulation and the point is to measure how much heat passes through some surface, what I'll do is I'll just like plot the total amount of heat going through that surface versus the relative mesh size. So if the coarsest mesh has a size of one, the next one's half of that, the next one's half of that, et cetera, et cetera, you can make a plot of heat versus relative mesh size and let's say this one this one looks like it has four simulation points to a relatively good approximation the amount of error in the simulation is the difference between the value of the two finest meshes um, so like you take uh, you know the the finest mesh you did look at its result and the next to finest mesh that you did take its result the difference between those is basically the the amount of discretization error. Um, the reason why you did to use or supposed to use three meshes, by the way, is that the real method for doing this, like the not approximate method, actually involves taking an extrapolation. So you can use three points to extrapolate um, to figure out first of all what is the extrapolated final answer. And second of all, there's a way to more accurately figure out what the extrapolated final uncertainty is in that answer. And you'll usually get a better result that way than the approximate way that I just mentioned. But um, the way that I mentioned is the easiest way to think about it. Um, typically, the error does not scale linearly with the size of the element. So there is a little bit more to the extrapolation method, but I'd have to refer you to the ASME standard for that.
for those details. Um, there is one more little bit of to the um, uncertainty quantification, which is that me the mesh is really not the only way that uncertainty gets into the result. Um, there are also there's also the issue of when you're simulating something, there are input parameters like. In a thermal situ simulation, you might be simulating like how much, um, you know, the thermal properties are one of the inputs that go into the model. Generally, th the thermal properties are not known to better than maybe five or ten percent uncertainty, and so that means that the outputs that you get will also have some amount of uncertainty associated with them because the inputs had an uncertainty associated with them. Um, so um, the way you handle that is basically just propagation. This is a standard propagation of error stuff. So what you do is you take, you look, you have to do a bunch of simulations here. So you, you look at how sensitive the output of the simulation is. So this is the thing phi that's written here. So like let's say I'm interested in the lift on an aircraft and one of the inputs is the viscosity let's say. So like what you would, and the viscosity has some uncertainty associated with it. So what you would do is you would do two simulations to figure out how much the lift changes when I change the viscosity input by a certain amount. And then, so that, that'll that help you get a finite difference estimate of the, um, you know, d phi d parameter. Um, so the rate of change of the lift with changes in the viscosity, let's say, times the uncertainty in the viscosity, that'll give you the total uncertainty in the lift associated with the uncertainty in the viscosity. Then you have to add that up for all of the different inputs in your model if there are more than one that have uncertainty in them. Um, typically you assume that they're uncorrelated so that after you, add, you can add up the squares and then take the square root um, to get the total amount of input error. Um, in the system. And so that, that amount of error is in addition to any mesh refinement error that you have or discretization error. So um, that's more, that more or less is what's involved in uncertainty quantification. Uh, again, the ASME standard goes into a lot of more details um, about that and then also goes into some more details about um, how you compare you know, the simulation plus error bars to the experiment plus its error bars um, in order to understand, you know, whether simulations are actually matching experiments. Um, much of this is actually laid out over like the 100 pages of the ASME standard.